Hi guys, good morning and thanks for joining. Good so, morning, sir. yeah, good morning. In the last night class, we discussed about uh, what are the ED or agent status and whenever status showing as the unknown or inactive or sleeping, how to troubleshoot. In the similar way, whenever we are facing server related issues related to bandwidth utilization, CPU utilization, how can you troubleshoot? And also we discussed about what are the severity levels of the respective EDR and what are the EDR actions that can be taken care of? And also what are the different types of actions can be EDR provided based on the generic wise. In this similar, we discussed about HLD and LLD. So today topic is uh, EDR implementation. What are the initial security configuration we have to do? And once this topic is completed, I will go and I will discuss about policies and also detection methods. So that is the agenda for today class. So EDR implementations, whatever theoretically we are discussing, just you can apply to practical, that's all. So first thing is already, okay, so this one I explained yesterday itself, same thing I will repeat a couple of things. So whenever we are purchasing EDR, that may be on-premise solution, or uh, that may be SaaS-based solution, that may be purchasing software, deploying on top of the either Windows Server or Linux Server. So first thing is we have to assign one of the management IP address or management host name. So assign the IP address. Assign the management IP or management host name. Why we have to assign this one to configure the device to minus the entire device total end to end for configuring EDR tool and also managing of the EDR tool. So that's why we have to assign next one assign the subnet mask. So this one will do the network segmentation part or network. Uh, Subnetting part. Next one is default gateway. Assign the default gateway. So this one is mainly can be used for routing purpose. So the traffic is going from inside to outside in the similar way outside to inside. So for that reason, we have to assign the default gateway IP address. For DNS resolution, we have to integrate with our primary DNS and secondary DNS. This is for DNS resolution. Whenever any application or whenever any website is accessing, that particular request will go to EDR as well, and it can do the resolution of the respect to DNS. Next one is assign the NTP server integration, configure the management, system management, basically. Uh, there are two different types of administration settings it contains. One is normal settings. Second one is technical settings. So normal settings, basically DNS resolution part or maybe assigning uh, the time management, huh? nothing but integrating of the, our NTP server. Okay. So like Asia, uh, I mean, in India, whatever time standard zone it is available, that one we have to integrate. So configure NTP. So this is for the syncing up with this, our normal time, our local time zone. In this similar way, integrate with SNMP. All these settings are by default, it is available. Just we have to go and we have to edit those options, that's all. So assign the SNMP configuration. Why we have to assign the SNMP version one, version two, or version three? It will take care of the network discovery. What are all the devices are available? Automatically it will identify. Now we can do this aggregation part, like a host discovery. So we are not sure how many endpoints are there, how many printers are there, how many servers are there in that scenario. So first thing is uh, just you can assign this SNMP version one or version two or version three. What is the difference between these three? Version one and version two is a completely plain text or clear text data it can be used. 
but snmp version 3 on the other hand it can be used encrypted text or username and passwords so that is the main difference so this one not only just it will identify the network discover related to endpoints even it can identify about uh, managing of those endpoints as well simple network management protocol this one almost all the tools we will enable basically so for network discovery or host discovery and also managing of all the network devices or endpoints so that is about snmp integration next one integrate with active directory so our ldap so for this one we have to gather the information like common name that is uh, active directory host name otherwise i can put host name of the active directory in this similar way we have to gather the username and password related to admin so admin active directory username and password in case it's a confidential one just you can share your screen and they will provide the username and password along with this one even we have to define the port number as well in case our edr tool is supporting ldap we have to use the port number 389 in case it is using ldaps then we have to use 636 port number so then only communication so why we have to use this one for traceability whenever any security incident it's happened so what is the timestamp so when the incident it's happened and who is the user and identity of the user so that is the reason so we have to integrate with the active directory as well so traceability purpose traceability of the end user tracking so that's why we have to integrate with the active directory so next one integrate with our smtp server So either you can define the email address, example, SOC at the rate of, sorry, EDR at the rate of TCS.com. Nothing but entire EDR team, they will receive the email notification. So that is the possible option. And also we have one more option. Directly we can take the SMTP server IP address and also SMTP server admin username and also SMTP server admin password along with port number 25. So that is the port number of the protocol of the SMTP server either configure distributed email address dl or gl dl means distributed list gl means group list so for example edr at the rate of tcs.com all the people will receive otherwise you can configure or else integrate with smtp server it depends on vendor to vendor. Couple of vendors directly we can configure the email address. Couple of vendors directly we can integrate the SMTP server. If you want to integrate the SMTP server, we need either IP address of the SMTP server or host name. In this similar way, admin, username and password of the SMTP server and along with port number. Port number is 25. So couple of EDR tools nowadays, it is supporting proxy capability as well. So like a forward proxy, we have to define the proxy IP address and port number of the proxy is 8080. So now whenever any website can be accessed by the end user, based on the app control and web control policy, it can identify whether it is legitimate website or legitimate application or else malicious website or malicious application. Okay. So now we have to integrate one more very very important server that is our sam tool sam tool integration so obviously whenever any malicious or suspicious or abnormal malware category of the attack it's happen these logs we are into edr logs we are integrating to sim tool and based on the correlation rules, we have to define the correlation rules for all malware categories. Like whatever 18 to 20 attacks we discussed part of malware category, like a potentially unwanted program, or key loggers, or adware, or spyware, or logic bomb, or rootkit. So virus swarm, trojan, remote access trojan, so ransomware attack. For every attack, we have to create a correlation rule. So now, whenever the end user or maybe external attacker 
using driver downloads or maybe through clicking on the malicious malware attachment of the phishing emails or maybe copying of the malicious file through removal devices. So these logs will go to our SIM tool and based on the logic or based on the computer algorithm, based on the condition, whatever we define part of our SIM tool. So automatic alert will be triggered. So now as a cybersecurity SOC L1, L2, L3, in SIM tool, we'll take care of the investigation. Okay. So here there are two different ways we can integrate SM tool to SM tool, EDR tool to SM tool. So there are two different options. One is syslog server method. Second one, API token method. So EDR tool integration to SIM tool. Now we are discussing about EDR only. I will explain about dedicated EDR capabilities and EDR features only. So how we can integrate, there are two different options. In case if I are using on-premise hardware-based module of the EDR tool, hardware-based EDR tool, we can use syslog server method option. So port number of the syslog, you know already, it's a 514. So now, it's a push method it will use. We have to log into the EDR tool and we have to go to the administration settings tab and we have to click on, click on the add server. So here add server is same tool and we have to define the SM tool IP address. For example, maybe IBM Curator or Splunk or Exabeam. In the similar way, we have to define about uh, port number. Port number is 514, protocol is TCP and log format is syslog. So this is the way how the logs can be integrated on-premise CDR logs to SIM tool. So that is the first method. So in case if you are in SaaS based EDR tool, like a software as a service, so it will, uh, any so software as a service EDR, any so software as a service based to that may be vulnerability management, that may be email gateways, that may be proxy servers, that may be our EDR or DLP or encryption tools, it will support API token method. So what is this API token method? Application programming interface. So here you can use REST API. So calling of one, basically what is this API? Calling from one call to another call. It's like a intermediate device. So this API now it will act as a intermediate in between our EDR tool versus SIM tool. So now here, what we have to do, we have to generate API token key and also API token password and also API token username. So after taking this one, now we have to go back to SIM tool and we have to do copy paste. So this particular method is called pull method. Don't get confusion. We can discuss all these methods once again, part of our SIM tool integration. So here, what all the information we have to gather? So here just only SM tool IP address. Port number. Protocol. And log format. So coming back to here, pull method. First, on the EDR side, we have to gather the API token, API URL access key or username and password. So we have to generate this one on the EDR side. And later, what we have to do, we have to go to SIM tool and we have to do whatever API URL you have taken, access key and password we have taken, just you can copy paste by selecting the EDR option. So EDR, whatever EDR you are using, that may be CrowdStrike or Defender or Sophos or Sentinel-1 or Trend Micro, or Macafe, or ESET, and so on. Go to SIM tool and paste API token URL, access key, and secret key. Now it will pull the SIM tool will pull the logs from respect to EDR tool. So these are the two different types of integration methods we can use to integrate our EDR logs to SIM tool. Now here we have to create a correlation rules. So for all malware category of the attacks in SIM tool, uh, we have to create a correlation rule. So that one we, we have to do one of the integration. 
so this is mainly for the to receive the email notifications so later there are a lot of other initial security configurations we have to do so mapping of the ip address to host name and so on and also create asset groups <clears throat> Or device groups. So why we have to create this one for regular update management? Whenever any antivirus or EDR updates are happening, uh, we have to do uh, so those patch updates related to antivirus. So for this one, we have to create not only that one, as I said previously, even EDR agent upgrade as well. So we have to create this asset group and we have to push those updates. So create similar type of operating system or model number. Then you can push those updates. So next one is create policies. So what are the policies? By default, EDR tool or XDR tool or even uh, traditional antivirus or SIM tool or firewall, any tool, Basically, it will provide default policies. Just you can go and you can verify what are business requirement do you have, whether it is matching the default policy or not. In case it is matching, there is no need to edit anything. Just you can enable that policy. In case it is not matching, just you can go and edit according to our business requirement. So maybe, for example, I want to monitor all the virus related category of the attacks. I don't want to block. So just example I'm giving. So maybe default policy it is saying it is alert, but as per my business requirement, I want to block that particular virus category of the attacks. So this is the way. So based on the action also, we can define according to our customization part, according to our business requirement, we can go and we can edit the existing policy. Just a cloning of the respect to default policy is called as customization. Okay. So what are the different types of policies we have to configure? Already we discussed this one. So threat prevention policy. So vendor to vendor, these policies will vary. So as I said, terminology is different, but most of the policies are in generic. So here by default, it is malware prevention, ransomware prevention, power cell execution prevention, Python execution prevention, everything will fall under threat prevention capability. And also it has inbuilt HIDS, HAPS capability as well. There is no need to purchase separate HIDS, HAPS tool. So that is the first thing. It will prevent all malware, ransomware, lol bins, category of the attacks including power cell executions as well. So next one is here we have to create a app control policy as well. So what is this app control? Which application should be whitelisted and which application should be block listed? So we have to gather all the applications list. What are the applications we are using in our organization? So identify those applications that may be internet facing or internal application enable those applications only whitelisting of the options. So remaining all other applications should be block listed. So enable whitelisting and block listing of the applications. So next policy web control. So in the web control side, what are the websites or domains? So identify the domains and websites with whom are doing business and which is our business requirement. And then block list and white, white list. Based on business requirement. So that is the web control. In the similar way, we have removal devices policy. Uh, 
uh, whenever someone is inserting either pen drive or memory stick or external hard disk or floppy disk or any other third party peripheral devices or removal devices. So we have to define the policy. First of all, as per information security, a uh, part of the compliance side with whom we have to give the pen drive access with whom we should not give the pen drive access. Couple of times, couple of organizations for senior management or board of the directors, they will give pen drive access because of the business needs. Remaining all other end users, they will not give the so pen drive access. So according to the respective role and according to the policy, whatever it is defined, it is one of the policy as well, removal devices policy. There are different types of policies we have to configure under the compliances. One is vulnerability management policy, password policy, sexual harassment policy, data protection act policy. So removal devices policy. So data retention policy. There are so many policies we have to confirm more than 30 policies. So these co policies contracted by information security manager or internal auditing team, part of the GRC compliances. So these removal devices policy also they will define. So because they have to track auditing part as well. So now based on our business requirement, so we have to, whether for every end user that may be CEO or CTO or board of the director, we have to block all these remote devices policy or couple of people we have to give. It depends on the business requirement. So based on the business requirement, configure removable devices policy. So, Next one, basic DLP. So this DLP, uh, there are different types of DLP. One is ordination point of DLP. So maybe you are working on a couple of projects. What are projects you're working on? Maybe you are copying, you, are, you have done the resignation part. So and you want to copy those uh, files or projects, what you're working on, maybe it will be for future purpose. So in that scenario, what you will do? So obviously either you will send from your professional email ID to personal email ID or maybe you will copy those through pen drive. So anyway, once you are inserting pen drive, based on the policy it is different, it will block it automatically. Maybe it will do the alert trigger notification at least. So it is like a violation of the respective DLP policies. So even email you are sending, that is also violation of the email policies related to DLP. So most of the people, they will try to do this one, but our DLP solution, whatever we are configuring the policy according to that one, at least it will do the alerting of that particular violation of the data breach or DLP, or maybe at least it will do the blocking of that particular policy, whatever we are configuring. So based on this policy only, either it will allowing or blocking, or maybe it will do the alert notification part at least. Okay. So here, once again, as I said, one is ordination point of DLP policies. So whenever any internal data or restricted data or private data or confidential data is leaking so we can create the policies a second type of related dlp is our pii data PHA data so once again this pii data or PHA data it will vary from country to country so australia canada usa uk india singapore netherlands belgium and so on so according to the country wise also, uh, we can create these PA policies. So it will do basic DLP only. It will not do full fledged DLP doing data classification and identifying of the data, which one is critical data, which one is non-critical data. Those full fledged DLP functionality cannot be done by our ADR tool. What it will do, just it will do basic DLP. It will not do any data classification. It will not do so what is the critical data what is non-critical data what is private data what is public data what is restricted data all those things it will not do just based on water policy we are creating first of all what are the different ways data can be leaked so data can be leaked there are four ways so one is through email second one through removal devices like a pen drives so third one is through cloud fourth one is through websites nothing but uploading or downloading of the files or large amount of the files you are uploading on the public websites like LinkedIn or Facebook or Naukari and so on. So these are all the ways data can be leaked. Now for these four different types of ways, how the data is leaking, now we have to create policy. 
this is one of the policy you have to create so but all the vendors are not supporting unfortunately so whatever i am saying right now these four different types of ways how the data is leaking it is not supporting every vendor so couple of vendors they are support dedicated to pia related policy only nothing but gdpr policy based on the country wise okay so this is about basic dlp part so in depth analysis we can discuss separately we have dlp session as well there we can discuss what is data custodian data owner data uh, asset data classification everything next one file integrity monitoring so even it will do basic file integrity monitoring as well by our edr tool even xdr tool as well so why we have to do integrity of the files so whether authorized person is adding or deleting or modifying the data or unauthorized attacker they are trying to execute malware infection to the targeted machine so that's why we have to monitor integrity of the file as well this integrity is master of the case is depending on the hash value so that may be md5 or sha1 or sha256 to verify malware infection is executing or else unauthorized user modifying the data or deleting or updating the data so that is about file integrity monitoring so next one we have update management so what is this update management it will do uh, it will do the regular antivirus edr updates whatever it's happening all over the world wide so every edr vendor so have r and d team it's a, nothing but research and development team it's a part of red team we can say uh, what is their role responsibility what are the new attacks are happening all over the world wide so what is the pattern of the respective malware category of the attack so whenever any new attacks are is happening these vendor r and d team or engineering team they can identify whether signature is existing or not it's a known category of the attack or whether it is unknown category of the attack so according to that one they will update their antivirus signature so these update management we have to do automatic updates not manual updates manual updates how you can go every day and you can do manual updates we have to define the scheduling of the time so for example every day midnight whenever vendor is vendor is releasing so any antivirus or edr updates it has to automatically download and install their vendor database so we will do automatic updates so this is scheduling basically so normally we will update midnight at 12 am so this is one of the updates related to antivirus uh, second one is edr agent updates one is antivirus or edr updates second one is edr agent version updates third one edr tool upgrade as well so entire overall tool also we have to upgrade because not a fixed constant in nature of the version so these are all the three different types of updates we can uh, take care under the update management so next policy it's a by default basically we have technical support or premium support it's one of the licensing option also so what is this technical support or premium support <coughs> whenever any uh, issue it is rising and we don't know how to fix it and, and we don't know how to debug the issue and we don't know how to troubleshoot the issue so as i said yesterday itself we is, we discussed about two practical scenario so whenever any compatibility issues will occur or maybe edr agent is showing as unknown or inactive or sleeping and we don't know how to troubleshoot so we are paying money for this one licensing cost approximate $10000 or $2000 in between so now uh, whatever issue we are facing we have to raise a support case with the vendor now technical assistance team they will come online and they will resolve the issue 
so this is also one of the policy we have to enable so after purchasing the tool first and foremost what we have to do we have to do the registration for example whenever you are purchasing any mobile or any laptop or any two wheeler or four wheeler first and foremost we'll go and we'll do the registration part so uh, maybe physical damage or any other damages to locker so based on the warranty so they will re replacement our devices or maybe they will do modification of the our devices they'll fix the problems same way even after purchasing our security tools we have to do the registration so nothing but we have to go and we have to do the support portal registration and whenever any issues will occur we have to raise a case and vendor will come to online and they will support us so these are all the different types of policies we have to configure okay now <clears throat> detection methods separately i am not discussing so anyway it's a part of our implementation itself we are discussing about policies as well detection methods so we are configuring the policies that doesn't mean that our edr tool by default automatically it will block or quarantine or clean or safeguard our malwares so back end every vendor has a product development so whenever this particular pattern it will appear it has to alert or it has to notify or it have to give the alert notification whenever the signature is matching automatically it has to block so or maybe it has to quarantine in case any infection is not existing related to malware so it has to do cleaning of the file or maybe allowing of the file so these are all detection methods so we will not enable anything it's a completely back end process so that is the way how the tool will be deployed sorry tool will be developed by product development team okay so now what is different is detection methods are there part of our edr tool as i said there is no need to enable anything here by default it is already enabled once we are purchasing the tool and we are deploying the tool but policies we have to enable okay so before going to detection methods policy types so there are two different types of policy types one is default policy or rules policies is also called as rules second one is customized one so this customized one based on our business requirement according to our business requirement so we have to go and we have to do the customization part so these are the two different types of policy types we have to configure either we can use directly <coughs> sorry in case default policy itself it is sufficient for our business requirement just you can keep as it is there is no need to change anything so next one we uh, dashboards i'll discuss i mean uh, uh, detection methods i will discuss later so dashboards so this dashboards is completely once again business requirements so there are default dashboards are existing so once again we have customized dashboard also so most of the cases we can use the customized dashboard what are the different types of dashboards normally we will configure top incident types or category top incident category of the attacks so nothing but so which type of category of the attacks are coming more in our organization side whether virus or worm or ransomware or power cell execution or python execution or mimic edge or adware or spyware and so on so next one is uh, example i will give but it depends on the completely business requirement side so i will give okay, in general examples top users are impacting continuously so every user most of the cases from his system continuously we are getting the alerts so maybe he is downloading or maybe his agent is not working maybe so he is doing some of the illegitimate activity by unknowingly or unintentionally so top users are impacting top assets are impacting so top applications blocking so as i said even it has app control and web control option as well 
So whenever any end user is accessing any website, that may malicious content is existing, or maybe any illegitimate activity is existing, that are top application blocking also. Top application bandwidth utilization. So which one is causing more bandwidth utilization? In the similar way. Security posture of the organization. Okay, so overall security out of five scale range, how much it is appearing. And the next one, we can create other dashboards like uh, uh, risky assets and also risky users. So this is the way we can create customized dashboards. So we according to completely our requirement, what information we want to see basically. Okay. And also we can see top outbound connections as well. Top outbound connections. Communicating to which IP. So nothing but it's a public IP. This is one of the very, very practical use case. And it's one of the favorite entire equation also. One of the end user system is got compromised and it's keep on communicating to command and control sounder, command and control server as an outbound connection. In that scenario, how can you do investigation? So even malware category type wise also, we can see the dashboards. So these are all the different types of dashboards. Next one is reports. So reports also by default, they will give a couple of reports and we can create customized one as well. So what are the different types of reports? As I said, first and foremost, healthy checkup report, it's very important. So to see about agent status of the each and every EDR agent installed asset. So that health checkup report. So next one is uh, weekly report, daily report. How many incidents are occurring and weekly report. So monthly report, quarterly report and finally annual report. So how many incidents are coming? How many are on hold? How many are pending? How many are closed? It's a manual process or also involved. Coming back to technical reports also. So top assets are got compromised. Top users got impacted. Top applications. Accessing by end users. So these are all the different types of technical reports also we can generate. There are two different types of reports. One is process oriented reports, one is technical reports. So here technical is nothing but whatever users are going to impact or whatever assets are going to impact or whatever servers are going to impact. In the similar, what are the different types of malware it is occurring? Topmost ransomware, topmost virus, topmost remote access trojans, all those are technical oriented. Then what are the process oriented per day? How many instances are received out of whatever instance received? How many are new? How many are work in progress? How many are on hold? How many are closed or resolved? So these are all process oriented reports. So, <coughs> sorry. So these are all the reports also we have to configure. Next one is threat hunting. <coughs> so, <coughs> What is this threat hunting? Uh, what is the, the main difference between traditional antivirus versus EDR and XDR? EDR and XDR has a capability of threat hunting as well. So everything, whatever we are blocking and allowing or quarantining, it's based on the policies only. So based on these policies only, either it will block or quarantine, or maybe it will do the so cleaning of those files. But that is not sufficient because it's a condition based. It's a rule based. It's a algorithm based. So it's a complete automated way. So these things are couple of times it is not sufficient. For example, maybe EDR agent is sleeping. That particular system is got compromised. Whether we will aware in case rule is not enabled. Obviously, EDR agent itself will not communicate. 
So the, that type of things cannot be identified based on the rule based. In that scenario, what we have to do? We have to do the hunting of the threats proactively using hypothesis based or manual based, using queries based as well. So hunting of threats based on assumption or hypothesis or yeah based on the hypothesis or based on the assumptions wise so here completely ma or manual way so what is mean by this one for this one different vendors they will use different types of programming languages or queries there is no need to worry guys so defender for example microsoft defender it will use kql custo query language remaining all other vendors so that may be crowd strike or sophos trend micro sentinel one eset mcafee semantic resolution one kaspersky all these so it will use sql based so there is no need to write a query also everything like a user friendly just we can go give the drop down list it's a sql based so there is no need to write any sql queries here so just we have to go and we have to do the drop down list for example so on the dashboard you are identified one of the risky user continuously his system it is getting lot of alert notification why it is coming continuous alert notification now we have to go and we have to do manual analysis for that one we can identify the ip address of the end user or username of the end user so then you can filter out that particular username for example username equals to ramesh or username equals to mahesh so now you can see what action is trying to do so that is the way how everything we can do the manual way of the hunting of the threats so it's not based on the rule or based on the condition or based on the algorithm so more things we can discuss part of uh, our uh, even sim tool this concept is applicable to sim tool as well okay so next one yeah so these are all the couple of things we have to implement so threat hunting it's a complete investigation analysis but anyway keep kept under the so implementation wise so detection methods by default it will be enabled there is no need to change anything here now we can go and we can do couple of other exclusions as well exclusions here so when we have to do exclusion of the respect to file or path or folder so or maybe hash value or maybe ip address or username as well already i think uh, ravi or someone is asked day before yesterday so one of the end user has a business case where he wants to download the file but unfortunately our edr agent is blocking that particular activity so i given one of the practical example also that practical example whatever i given so day before yesterday one of the devops guy he downloaded one of the powershell file from the github so unfortunately edr agent is suspecting that file has some of the malicious content is existing but in case our edr isn't is blocking how our devops guy is complete his roles and responsibilities or whatever duties we are assigning to him by his manager he will not complete it so he has to complete his task so now what devops guy will do he will raise a case so our edr agent is blocking this particular activity now as a edr analyst we have to take the hash value first and foremost and go to either edr tool itself or virustotal.com and check the reputation of the edr sorry check the reputation of the hash value of the file in case that file contains so legitimate just you can unblock that particular file or path or user or where he is downloading the url link so now you have to excluding because business is very important from organization point of view either you can 
exclude that URL link where the DevOps guy is downloading the file or exclude where the file is downloaded under the users or temporary downloads or exclude the IP address or exclude the username. So now automatically he will download the file and he can complete his tasks. So that is called exclusions. So a couple of times we can do local exclusion part of our EDR tool. Couple of times we'll do global exclusions where our distributed deployment option is available. Okay. So this is practical scenario. It's a very important entire question also. So whenever end user is trying to download or trying to copy file, trying to execute some of the files, Unfortunately, EDR agent is blocking that particular. So executing of the file or downloading of the file in that scenario, what will you do? Only for this particular scenario, uh, one of the person is selected for Abu Dhabi company that is called Emircom and is drawing four lakhs per month, dedicated to EDR vacancy. In the interview time also, they expected more on global exclusion and local exclusion part. So because business point of view, they asked about this particular question. So this question itself, they took approximate 10 to 15 minutes discussion. Finally, that candidate is selected. Okay, so that is about exclusion part here. So how we can define this one? Whenever any business case, okay. If it is legitimate, okay, you will exclude. What about illegitimate part? So hash value you are taking and you are checking the reputation, but unfortunately, Wiretotal.com or EDR tool is showing as illegitimate content. So now you are getting confusion part. Now we'll form to end user. So stating that this is particular file is malicious file. So we can't accept. So, but business also very important. No contradictory sentence. This particular process, we can call it as conflict of interest. What do you mean conflict of interest? Two people agreement is completely different. So in that, that particular process, we can call it as conflict of interest. So now, so EDR side security person is saying that I'm right. And DevOps guy saying that, so for business side, I'm right. So now two people are different opinion, different agreement. This process, we can call it as conflict of interest. This is also one of the interview question. Whenever any conflict of interest, it will arise in your team, with your team members, how can you resolve it? It's a main is round of the interview question. Okay, so now coming back. In case if it is legitimate, now what it, 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 it estimate hash value, uh, just for confirmation side, now you can raise a case with the vendor and what vendor is saying about the verdict of the file. So even vendor also saying it's a completely illegitimate. Now you can inform back to respective the web's guy or his director stating that it's a illegitimate. In case they will think like we'll accept the risk and business is important for us, and accountability and responsibility they have to take and finally we'll exclude the file. This is what we have to do. Okay, but don't take everything on your shoulder. Accountability and responsibilities. In future, anything is getting compromised, they will blame us. Okay, so whenever any business case like downloading of the file or copying of the file, by our internal stakeholder causing EDR agent blocking the activity internal stakeholders when you say internal stakeholders all other team members will raise case with EDR team and EDR team has to validate and verify the reputation of the files and so based on the reputation we have to exclude either URL link where the file is downloading or file path, file download, hash value, or EDR 
even username and IP address. So this is called exclusions. Okay. So as I said, in case you are getting confusion and please raise the case with the vendor. Okay. So couple of times, some of the system will get compromised. Whenever system is getting compromised, what are the appropriate remediation steps or mitigation steps we have to take care? So that one I can discuss part of the investigation side. Okay. So that, that is about exclusions here. So these are all things also we have to configure uh, based on the requirement or based on the business case wise. So these are all overall configurations, implementations, policies, everything we have to configure on the EDR side. So now we will go for the detection methods. So yes, we can even without downloading the file also, uh, nowadays, as I said, EDR tools are integrated to virustotal.com and hash value generators and google.com and other websites as well. Once you are clicking on automatically, it will redirect to third party websites or open source websites and it will give the verdict. There is no need to download file from the, so wherever uh, we are downloading or uploading or copying of the files, it is possible, yes. That is the functionality or beauty of the EDR and XDR. But traditional virus doesn't have that functionality. So next one, detection methods. So what are the different types of detection methods? So EDR tool, it will support. So these detection methods, two detection methods are common for every tool, not only just EDR, it is applicable to SIM, it is applicable to DLP, it is applicable to web application firewall, it is applicable to firewall, proxy, NADS, NAPS, all other tools as well. So those two methods are, first one is signature based. Second one is behavioral pattern. Or machine learning or artificial intelligence. This particular method is also called a heuristic approach based on the behavior. Like execution of the, some of the programming files, all those will fall under here. So third one is sandboxing. Fourth one is baseline. So as I said, first two methods are common to all other tools as well. So these two methods are common to each and every tool. So these two methods are applicable to other tools like SIM, vulnerability management, firewall, proxy, Web application firewall, DLP, NADS, NAPS, file integrity monitoring, DDoS protection tools, and so on, or extra. So these two come by default. If you know the answer, if you don't know the answer, so what are the detection methods in case if they will ask? Most of the case they will not ask in the interview time, but in case they will ask. So you can say blindly signature based or machine learning or artificial intelligence capability or behavioral pattern. So these two methods are common to every tool. So now according to tool wise also, it is different. Now additionally, you can see on the EDR side, additionally two more. So detection methods are sandboxing and baseline. Most of the interviews, they will not expect this one, but policies they will expect. So, but you should understand how the detection is happening. Okay, what is the backend process? So now we can discuss these things one by one. First one is signature. So signature method or signature detection methods for known category of the attacks. Every vendor, so they will keep one of the dedicated ID number for each and every attack and it will maintain in their database. Whenever similar type of attack whenever attacker is trying to do or internal employee trying to do unknowingly or unintentionally, 
it will match that particular ID. So then finally, so based on this signature, automatically it will block it. So that is called signature detection method. Every vendor in their vendor database attack IDs or signature it will maintain whenever similar type of attack is happening it will compare with vendor database in case signature is matching automatically it will block the activity so this is applicable to known category of the attacks signature detection method is applicable to known category of the attacks okay so that is about signature. So this is common to every vendor. So if I want to show practically, so I will go to Portigate. This is applicable to every tool, as I said. How vendor will maintain the database. So don't, okay, so uh, confuse here because I don't have ready-made EDR tool is available. So that is the reason I'm showing in the Portigate firewall. So you can go to security profiles, go to IDS IPS, IPS signature. Now, can you see my screen? Can you see yes, my screen? Yes. Yeah. You can see here right now. So take example, this may be ED or maybe this may be firewall. This is applicable, same concept is applicable to every vendor. So now IPS signatures, 18,187. Right now, Portigate vendor is supporting for 18,187. Now, all these are signature. Now you can see here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so on and so on. So this is like a signature now and the action is block and this is the vulnerability number, nothing but ID number of the respective attack. So and which is applicable to which type of operating system. So now every vendor, so they will maintain the vendor database for known category of the attacks. Now whenever similar type of attack is trying to do by external attacker or maybe internal employee trying to do some of the malicious activity, it will compare with these signature in case if it is matching that particular ID number or maybe CVE number or maybe signature or pattern automatically it will block it. That is called basically signature based detection method. Nothing but it's for known category of the attacks. Same thing is applicable to EDR as well. I have shown practically Portigate firewall. So next one is behavioral pattern. So this is also called as machine learning or artificial intelligence. So machine has to learn how it will learn. It's not for one day job. It's for not for two day job. Machine can be understand based on the end user activity, based on the asset activity, based on the database activity, based on the application activity. And also what is the pattern? So whether it is known pattern or unknown pattern, existing pattern or new pattern. So whether in the past, whether this type of attack it's appeared or not appeared. So that is basically behavioral pattern or machine learning or artificial intelligence related how it will identify. So this particular attack, this particular detection method is applicable to unknown category of the attacks, new category of the attacks. This method can identify new category of the attacks or unknown category of the attacks. 
okay one practical example you can take now one of the application development guy so he wants to download node js for regular his application development whatever application development he is doing on the regular basis he need node js it's a java based library or package it's one a third party software okay it's a tps so what are application so there are so many libraries and packages can be used by application development teams so like react to js angular node js oracle open jdk oracle java so there are so many libraries and packages they will use okay so now node js is one of the library and package for every application development it's a free of cost basically so that is the reason always they will go for free of cost related libraries and packages related to third party software now this application development guy for this project he is using node js next project also using node js next project also node js and so on regularly so he wants to use node js because it's a free of cost we can reduce our cost and also we can get profits as well so for minimizing the cost now coming back here so whenever this application development guy first time he is accessing node js first time only for example edr tool is implemented or xdr tool is implemented after implementing edr tool for example take cloud strike so edr agent is installed in his laptop as well related application development guy so now that he is accessing first time node js he is downloading node js file now from node js website it's a first time now what edr agent under the application development guy it will do automatically in the cloud strike edr tool alert will be triggered because a first time activity in the past it's not never happened it will not compare now so alert will be triggered so it is a legitimate activity only but even though alert will be triggered why because he never did done in the past so he never did in the past so it's a first time activity it, it will treat now based on the behavior of the end user why he is access first time only maybe he is trying to do some other illegal activity or maybe illegitimate activity or maybe abnormal activity it will throw an alert notification stating that some of the illegal activities going on now we have to go and we have to verify whether really that file contains the malicious content or not so tomorrow also so once again application development guy only for his application development side or website design side is downloading node js now it will check with the past date in the past whether this particular guy or user is download a similar type of the action or activity or file and also what is the edr action it has done that particular time period and what is the automated response it has taken so day after tomorrow also he is download node js once again fourth day and so on so now what will do machine can be understand what is the activity so now based on this past data based on the real time monitoring based on the existing data based on the behavior based on the activity based on the previously edr action now automatically this particular activity can be make it as a legitimate activity this is the way how the behavior can be identified and it can make sure that from illegitimate to legitimate in case it's illegitimate automatically it will block it so when it is useful so whatever regularly threat intelligence feeds it's happening or new attacks are it's coming in that scenario or unknown category of the attacks are coming now basically it's a first time activity only automatically so based on this behavior based on the first time activity based on the unknown category of the attack it will trigger the notification now so this is very useful for so whenever any new attacks are happening all over the world wide obviously daily basis there are a lot of new attacks are coming lot of new virus new worms new trojans new ransomware 
new zero day vulnerabilities. Okay, so new data breach is happening. So based on this particular thing, we will rectify and proactively we can do the instant investigation and analysis. Finally, we can safeguard our organization. So that is called behavioral pattern or machine learning or artificial intelligence capability. So yes, there are a lot of false positive. Initially, it will appear. And later, we have to reduce those false positive by doing fine tuning part. So this is the way. When I, yeah, please. First time, you know, you know, okay, I'm going to tell you the security reasons. So, hmm. so uh, next time, you know, you the unknown first time, you this going to tell sir, it will tell you. No, uh, in that scenario, what it will do, it will, whatever initially you have done the action. So, first time, maybe you access Node.js. It's a legitimate only. So, now, after completing the investigation, so, in the response-wise, what you will give, it's a legitimate, it's a non-malicious one. Verdict you will give as a response part. Already it is there in the past investigation and it is there as a response as well. Now, second time, so similar type of user is downloading the same thing. It is already, it will verify with the database or past data or existing database. It will make it like a legitimate only. Is it clear? It is illegitimate. It's illegitimate, obviously it will block it. Okay, next time also it will treat yes. as a new one. Yes. Thank you. Welcome. So that is about behavioral pattern here. And this one particular concept in SIM tool, we can call it as UEBA. Same concept in SIM tool side, we can call it as UEBA. It's one of the advanced technology. It's L3 level role. Okay. What is UEBA? User entity behavioral analytics combination of data analytics along with the data science and also machine learning and behavioral pattern capability so this is on the sim tool side so that is about behavioral pattern next one baseline method what is this baseline method once again based on the user traffic so what is the traffic every end user or every asset or every database or every server so it will form like a baseline based on observing two months of the traffic or three months of the traffic it's not like a one day job as i said previously also based on the non uh, non peak hours and peak hours so according to that one whatever maximum threshold of the traffic it is appearing that one it will consider as a baseline. Now, whenever that baseline is crossing, our EDR tool will suspect some of the illegitimate or malicious activities going on our endpoint site or network site. Then it will throw alert notification. Now we can go and we can see whether that particular activity or alert is legitimate or illegitimate. So that particular process, we can call it a baseline method. So based on the traffic observation or peak and non-peak hours of the traffic, tool can be form a baseline whenever baseline traffic it is crossing alert will be triggered in the edr tool and we have to do investigation part that is called baseline method last one heuristic approach as i said heuristic approach subset of our behavioral pattern i will keep that one also Heuristic approach method, it is subset of machine learning or artificial intelligence or behavioral pattern. So most of the case, it is applicable to any executing of the programming or development or programming languages for new. Last one, sandboxing. 
So what is sandboxing environment? As I said, traditional antivirus doesn't have the <laughs> integrating of virustotal.com or integrating of the MitreAttack framework, integrating of the google.com or some of the other threat intelligence feeds websites. So whenever, if you want to do investigation, already someone asked previously, so we have to download the file and we have to do the analysis of the file. So testing of the files, everything we have to do on the testing environment. So if you are downloading in our, our uh, laptop, obviously our system will get compromised. So that is the reason we have to take the malware samples of the files and we have to do the analysis under the parallel condition of the sandboxing environment. So nowadays sandboxing is not that much required unless otherwise if you have the any confusion on the verdict of the malware. Okay. So this is testing of the malware infection or executions in development environment or testing environment. So testing of the malware infection or execution in the development or testing environment, we can call it sandboxing environment. So whenever some of the system is got compromised and uh, so you, you don't have the hash value and you want to take the file and uh, you can take the file and you can do the password protected file. Always, whenever you are taking the file, you should be password protected only. After taking the password protected file, either you can go and you can copy the file through pen drive or maybe through you can send via through Outlook email and you can, wherever the testing environment is there, for that particular testing environment, you can copy the file. Then you can remove the password. Then you can test that particular static analysis of the malware using bit by bit code analysis or packet engineering studio or maybe auto run analysis or maybe using dynamic analysis of the malware based on the hash value method. So now it will give the verdict stating that whether that file infection is existing or not. So that is called sandboxing environment. So based on these detection methods only, our EDR tool can identify whether any file is traversing in our environment on the endpoint side or OS side. So it can give the infection whether it is existing or not, or what is the status of the malware. So according to that one, based on the policies configured, now either it will clean or allow the file or quarantine the file or delete the file or maybe it will block the file. So these are the detection methods. In the today morning class, what we discussed, we discussed about, so what are the different types of implementations we have to do once we are purchasing the EDR tool and also we started detection methods as well. Now we have a couple of things are pending. One is uh, investigations. Uh, second one is uh, uh, our uh, antivirus versus EDR versus XDR differences. That one I will cover in the evening class. Once this one is completed, then we can go to practical demo tool. That's all for today morning, guys. Do you have any questions? Any questions? By the way, I'm uploading all the videos. I'm not sure whether you're going through all these videos or not. Please go through all those. And one more thing in my YouTube channel, I am giving regular updates related to interviews whoever is attending. So please go and visit those interviews as well. Yesterday, a couple of people are attended cybersecurity SOC operation interviews, cloud security, vulnerability management, and EDR vacancies. Uh, so please go and what type of questions they are expecting. So at least you will get some idea. That's all for today morning, guys. Thank you so much. And evening class at 6 p.m. IST. Have a great day. Have a good day, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Bye.